Welcome to this video we will learn how to compare Poisson regression models. In this video we will see how we can use the likelihood ratio test and the archaic information criterion to compare Poisson regression models. To illustrate how these tests work, we will use the same example data as was used in the previous lecture where we calculated the likelihood and the deviance. This dataset represents counts of the number of metastatic lymph nodes in four cancer patients on treatment A and four patients on treatment B. The following proposed Poisson regression model was fitted to the data. The viral treatment is coded as zero for the ones on treatment A and as one for the ones on treatment B. By using a statistical software, the following parameter values were estimated. If we take e to the power of the intercept b0, we get the average count of metastatic lymph nodes in group A. And if we take e to the power of the sum of b0 and b1, we get the average count of metastatic lymph nodes in group B. We then calculated the log likelihood of our proposed model. Watch the previous lecture to see how these log likelihood values were calculated. Then we did the same calculations for the null model, which is a model including just an intercept. By fitting the null model to the data, B0 was estimated to 1.012. E to the power of B0 corresponds to the average count based on all data. The null model therefore represents a model with a single mean. The log likelihood of the null model was calculated to negative 17.11. The log likelihood of the so-called saturated model was calculated to negative 9.97. Once we had worked out the log likelihoods for all three models, we could calculate the deviance. In the previous video, we calculated the null deviance to 14.28 and the residual deviance to 7.36. A good model should have as low residual deviance as possible relative to the null deviance. In our case, the residual deviance is much lower than the null deviance. We can use either a likelihood ratio test or calculate the IAC value to test if our proposed model provides a significant improvement over the null model. The likelihood ratio test can be used to compare two nested models. The proposed model and the null model are nested because the proposed model contains all terms of the null model. The likelihood ratio test statistic is calculated by multiplying negative 2 by the log of the ratio of the likelihoods of the null and the proposed model. By using the logarithmic laws, we can express the log of the ratio as the log of the likelihood of the null model minus the log of the likelihood of the proposed model. The log of the likelihoods can be denoted like this. Let's use the following equation to calculate the likelihood ratio test statistic. These are the log likelihoods of the null and the proposed model that we calculated earlier. We plug in these values in the equation and calculate the likelihood ratio test statistic to about 6.9. Another way to calculate the likelihood ratio test statistic is to calculate the difference between the null deviance and the residual deviance. These are the null and the residual deviances that we calculated earlier. If you plug in the two deviances, we see that the likelihood ratio test statistic is calculated to about 6.9 which is the exact same value we got from our previous calculations based on the log likelihoods. To understand why these two equations give the same result, let's reformulate this equation so that we will end up with this equation. Remember that the null deviance is calculated based on the difference between the saturated model and the null model. 
and that the residual deviance is calculated based on the difference between the saturated model and the proposed model. If we now formulate the likelihood ratio test statistic as the null deviance minus the residual deviance, we see that we can eliminate the log likelihood of the saturated model, so that we end up with the following expression. We can factor this expression into this, where we multiply the differences in the log likelihoods by negative 2. We see that this expression is now identical to this one. Thus, both these equations will give the same likelihood ratio test statistic. Remember that the likelihood ratio test statistic was calculated to 6.9. Usually, the likelihood ratio test statistic is assumed to follow a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom equal to the additional number of estimated parameters in the proposed model. Since the proposed model has one more estimated parameter than the null model, the degrees of freedom is equal to 1. The area that covers the right hand side of the test statistic 6.9 in this distribution represents our p value. The area of the p value is equal to about 0 0.0086 or 0 0.0085 depending on how we round in the previous calculations. Since the p-value is less than the general significance level of 0 0.05, we reject the null model in favor of our proposed model where the two groups have different means. We can therefore conclude that the proposed model fits significantly better to the data compared to the null model. In other words, adding the variable treatment to the null model significantly improves the model. Note that we can also use the likelihood ratio test to compare two competing models that are nested. For example, we might want to extend our proposed model by including the variable age. We can then use a likelihood ratio test to compare the two models with or without the variable age. The model with the fewest parameters is usually set as the null model which represents the null hypothesis of the test. Another method to compare two models is to compute the archaic information criterion. This method also works to compare two models even though the two models are not nested. The so-called AIC value is calculated like this, where P is the number of estimated parameters in the model and double L is the log likelihood. To compare models, we calculate the AIC value for the two competing models and select the model which has the lowest AIC value. A low AIC value is obtained for a model with few parameters and which has as high log likelihood as possible. A high log likelihood means that the model fits well to the data. Models with more parameters generally fit better to the data. Therefore, to prevent overfitting, the model with more parameters gets a penalty in the calculation of the AIC value. Thus, the preferred model should be as simple as possible, but it should still fit relatively well to the data. Let's compare the proposed model with the null model by calculating the AIC value of the two models. These are the log likelihood values for the two models. Let's plug in our log likelihood values for the null and the proposed model. Note that the proposed model gets a penalty because it has two estimated parameters, whereas the null model estimates only one parameter. However, the proposed model has a much higher log likelihood because it fits better to the data. We see that the proposed model has a lower AIC value compared to the null model. We select the model which has the lowest AIC value. The proposed model is therefore preferred over the null model. Note that we can use the case information criterion to compare two competing models. For example, 
we could compare two models with or without the explanatory variable age. We then select the model with the lowest AC value. This was the end of this lecture about how we can compare models with the likelihood ratio test and by the archaic information criterion. In the next lecture, we will look at the assumptions behind the Poisson regression, where we will introduce the concept of overdispersion and how we can model such overdispersion by quasi Poisson and negative binomial models.